welcome to the Elephant Lounge. I'm your host Tuesday. I want to thank you for joining me. No charges for Michael Avenatti. Recently, Michael Avenatti graced the headlines once again when a young woman came forward to authorities claiming the creepy porn lawyer had physically assaulted her. The young woman has been identified as Marilyn Minetti, and apparently she is an actress and I believe a model as well. She's a very beautiful girl. She tweeted out would be yesterday. Uh, Michael Avenatti lost his temper, dragged me across the kitchen floor by my hair, and punched me in my face. But that's okay if you're in LA. Later, she tweeted, please follow. I will slowly post details of what happened between Michael Avenatti and I. I have no interest in going public until the Los Angeles DA declined to press charges against Mr. Avenatti. This man must be stopped before he kills someone. Hashtag Wednesday Wisdom. It has been announced by the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office they will not be seeking felony charges. They will be referring the case to city prosecutors for misdemeanor charges. Avenatti says he's waiting for apologies, which will likely come the day it is announced that Stormy Daniels will no longer strip and dive bars. Many people are rightly criticizing Avenatti over his outright hypocrisy. While he has insisted he is innocent of these accusations, he is the same person who represented the very obviously emotionally unstable Julie Swetnick. This is a woman who claimed she attended multiple parties with with Brett Kavanaugh some 30 years ago. She stated that a variety of young girls were gang-raped at these parties that she continued to participate in until the girl was her. Even mainstream media, who openly hated Kavanaugh, was unable to listen to Swetnick without chortling at her absurdity. Still, Avenatti insisted his client was credible and asked others to believe all women, citing most women are honest in their allegations, except, of course, when the allegations involve him. While most people on the political right agree all people should have their day in court and that every allegation should indeed be taken seriously, proof of guilt must be presented. This is what we are argued when it came to the claims against Kavanaugh. Those on the far left, like Avenatti, were advocating for something different altogether. They insisted that those of us on the right were actually advocating for violence against women and demanded all women should be believed without question. This is part of what originally spawned the hashtag believe all women and hashtag me too movements found on Twitter. Some advocates have now backed up a bit, claiming they advocated for justice through the courts all along, saying they only wanted for women to be taken seriously. But I don't remember anyone on the right disagreeing with that sentiment whatsoever. Still, we are left with far different situations when comparing Kavanaugh to Avenatti. For Kavanaugh, we have allegations that are dated back to his high school years where not one independent source could or would come forward to corroborate. The assault by Avenatti's alleged victim was reported immediately and pictures are available to confirm injury. I will post those pictures on my blog. They come from TMZ and one of them you can see her leg. There's clearly a bruise on the top back thigh, it looks like, and her hand has, it's a bit harder to see the one on the hand. It looks like maybe it's bruised or a little bit swollen. I am curious as to why a picture of her face is not there, since she claims he punched her in the face. Now, while Avenatti indeed deserves a fair and objective look at the allegations currently levied at him, it's impossible to ignore the irony of this situation. It always seems to be the loudest and most obnoxious folks are the same people doing the things they preach against. Avenatti at this point appears to be no different. So do we believe Avenatti or do we believe the girl? I think there's still a little bit more to be said here, but I can't help but laugh at how Avenatti has had to sort of backtrack and how the left is backtracking on all the things that they've said before. Because now all of a sudden, these same people that didn't once question Dr. Ford Blasey, oh, she was just so credible, have now all 
turned, just magically turned their way of thinking. Oh no, we have to wait. We have to reserve judgment. But when the right was saying that, when those of us on the right were saying, hey, wait a minute, where's the credibility here? Let's look at this a little objectively. That's all we were saying. We were accused of actually supporting violence against women. This is what the left claimed. But again, I say in this situation, it was reported immediately. There are at least some pictures, documentation, and we don't even know if there was other documentation taken. We only have what was released to the press. So there's documentation of injury. It's very hard for me to believe that a woman would purposefully injure herself if the claim is fake. It seems a little hard to believe. It can happen. I'm not saying it can't happen, but that seems a little bit more far, far of a stretch than, uh, say, a woman who comes forward 36 years later and her story doesn't match at all. And I've already gone through that before, prior. So tell me what you think. I'll be back soon. Please have a happy Thanksgiving and a very safe holiday. I love you all. Goodbye and good night. 